In this video, we're going to help you get familiar with the QuickCloud CDN dashboard. You should have already connected your WordPress site to QuickCloud with the Lightspeed Cache plugin and the CDN should be enabled. If you haven't done this step, please watch our onboarding playlist for help. You can find that link and additional resources in the video description. For almost everything we talk about in this video, if you have questions, check there for a helpful link. The Quick Cloud dashboard is your place to monitor your service usage, assign credits to services, and otherwise configure your domain. And while there's a lot you can do here, most of it is optional. We'll be focusing on the CDN service for this video, but you can apply most of what you learn to the optimization services, like critical CSS and image optimization too. So let's start by looking at the My Domains page. This page is purely informational. You get here by visiting my.quick.cloud in your browser or by clicking the My Domains link in the navigation bar at the top of any dashboard page. Also on the navigation bar, DNS zones, which you only need if you're using Quick Cloud to host your DNS, the user symbol where you can edit your profile and account level settings, notifications, and help. The rest of this page provides some account level details, including your admin email address and your account credit balance. Credits are used to purchase additional CDN bandwidth and quota for the optimization services. Under the account details section is a list of the domains serviced by this account. You may have many domains here, or you may only have one. Domains that are properly connected should have a status of OK. The services quota usage section shows you how much of your free CDN bandwidth or service quota you've used for the month. If you've purchased additional bandwidth or quota, there will be another set of progress bars directly underneath the free quota bars. Together, these should give you an accurate picture of how much bandwidth or quota you have left for the month. Click on any domain name to go to the services overview page for that domain. The services overview page is another purely informational one and it gives you a snapshot of the status and service usage for your domain across all services. It goes into more detail than the previous page, displaying such information as your CDN plan, information about your pay-as-you-go credit balance, and your subscription costs if applicable. Next we'll take a closer look at all the information and settings available in the CDN area of the dashboard. You can get there by clicking CDN in the top navigation bar or by clicking it on the services overview table. Up until now, everything we've seen has been purely informational, but here in the CDN section, there will be actions that you can take. Let's start with the CDN overview. If all is well, you will see that the CDN is in use, your DNS has been verified, and your SSL certificate is valid. If there has been some difficulty getting your site up and running on QuickCloud, this section will let you know what is wrong and how to fix it. From here, you can purge the CDN cache, though you shouldn't need to. QuickCloud CDN cache is controlled by the Lightspeed plugin that controls your server cache. So as long as everything is running smoothly, the caches should remain in sync. Another important feature is under attack mode. If your site is under attack, set this option to on. All visitors will see a reCAPTCHA message before they can proceed to your site. When the threat is over, set under attack mode back to off and everything will go back to normal. Next, the current month credits usage section expands on the credit information from the previous page and provides specific details about your site's credit usage. Click the link to see a 12 month history of credit usage. Next, in CDN plans, you'll see the details of the plan you're currently using and if you want to, you can switch to a different plan. Plan. Standard plan users may also disable some CDN regions. Any traffic originating from a disabled region would be directed to a CDN node in one of the active regions. Every month your domain is given free credits to be used towards CDN bandwidth. The number of credit varies depending on your domain's tier. Tiers are automatically assigned to a domain based on the server that the domain is using. So for example, if your website is powered by Lightspeed Web Servers Enterprise Edition, then your domain is assigned the Lightspeed Enterprise tier for free credits. The last thing in this summary section is pay as you go. If you're running out of CDN bandwidth, you can purchase more here. And if you routinely run out of CDN bandwidth, you can enable auto refill, which will purchase more bandwidth for you when your remaining quota goes below a specific threshold. The analytics area provides a selection of reports that can give you insights into your traffic. You can see which regions and POPs your traffic is originating from, how much bandwidth is consumed from different regions, and information about cacheable content, HTTP errors, and website security. QuickCloud saves a year's worth of data, which you can filter by hour, day, or month, and by data center location. This page is strictly informational, and you cannot hurt anything by clicking around or changing the filters. QuickCloud's default settings should work for most domains, but you can use the CDN config area to tweak a number of configuration settings. We won't go into detail here, 
here, but simply show you where everything is in case you need to make changes later. The CDN settings area is where you would go to temporarily turn off the CDN. To do so, set bypass CDN to on. When you're ready to start it up again, set it to off. This is the tool that you should use if you have a reason to turn the CDN off for a short time. It allows you to start it back up easily and without going through the entire setup process again. Quick Cloud CDN caches your content at the node level and the cache settings section controls that behavior. By default, CDN level caching is enabled as is browser cache, but you can use these settings to change that. You can also use the purge all CDN cache button to clear the cache at all of the CDN nodes, though you shouldn't need to. You can use this button if somehow the caches have gotten out of sync. Quick Cloud is the only CDN that can potentially support a complete end-to-end -end HTTP3 connection from origin server to CDN to client browser. The connection detail settings allow you to configure that end-to-end -end connection. You can turn HTTPS connections on or off between Quick Cloud and the front end or back end, and you can enable a quick connection to your back end server. If you don't know what any of this means, you should be fine using the default settings. You may wish to control which regions can visit your site. The traffic management section allows you to configure which countries and continents may or or may not access your content. Visitors from disallowed areas may be served a recapture message or outright rejected. If you're happy allowing a global audience, then you can safely ignore this section. The WordPress section provides WordPress specific security settings. By default, all of these security measures are disabled, but you can enable them if you wish to block access to certain types of WordPress requests. The security section is the biggest configuration area. If you don't know what some of these settings are, you can safely leave the defaults in place. We've chosen default settings that should work for most sites. The SSL certificate section is for if you've chosen to use your own SSL certificate. This is the section where you'd enter the details of that certificate. If you're letting QuickCloud generate SSL certificates for you, then you shouldn't need to do anything here. The Cloudflare section is only for those who have chosen to use the Cloudflare integration option when setting up their QuickCloud account. And finally, the maintenance section is for you to enable maintenance mode on your site. You only need to use this if you're working on your site and don't want any visitors. Visitors will see a 503 error until you turn maintenance mode off. The last thing on the CDN page is the DNS status section. When you first sign up for Quick Cloud CDN, your domain's DNS must be verified. The top area of this section gives you the status of the verification. Under that, you can see more detailed information about the verification and DNS status of your domains. And that is everything you need to know about the CDN service. The next three menu options pertain to the Quick Cloud Online services, which you may or may not be using. These services are image optimization, page optimization, which includes critical CSS, unique CSS, CSS and viewport image services, and LQIP, which stands for Low Quality Image Placeholders. There is more information about these services in our documentation and on our blog, so check the video description for relevant links. Lastly, we have the Settings section. You can update your server IP address here if it changes, and you can list any domain aliases you may have. This is also the place where you would go to delete a domain that you no longer wish to use with QuickCloud. And there you have it. You should now know where everything is within the QuickCloud dashboard. As we said earlier, most of these settings can be left alone if you're a beginner or someone who doesn't want to mess with settings. If you're curious though and would like to explore the CDN's capabilities further, be sure to take a look at our documentation which tells you everything you need to know. Thank you for taking this little tour and for liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. See you soon!